Praise the Lord. I welcome you again to today's broadcast. I want us to share some words from the book of Mark, chapter number five, 1 and verse number 35. Uh, reading from the book of Mark, chapter 1 and verse, verse number 35. The Bible says, Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Again, I'm reading. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Uh, this is the beginning of Jesus' ministry. And we see uh, uh, he was staying together with his disciples. If you read that passage, you will see uh, that Jesus was together with his disciples. And then, uh, after the night, very early in the morning, um, the Bible says, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, while the others were sleeping, Jesus had the habit of waking up early in the morning. We see this is the beginning of the ministry. But even in the later times when he was doing ministry, we see him, number one, uh, either late at night or early in the morning, going to solitary places, isolated places, to pray. After ministry, we would see him, after ministering to people, we see Jesus going to a solitary place. We see Jesus going to isolated places so that he may have time to pray. And I think that there are a few things that are, are, are important for us here to note. Um, and I would, I would want uh, to highlight them for us today because um, this will be the teaching for us today because every, everything that we read from the Word of God uh, is applicable in our hearts and our lives. It does not only apply to those people who are living during those times, you know, 2,000 years ago, uh, or 1,000 years ago, or those people who have gone ahead of us. The Word of God is active. And the Bible says it is like God. It is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And it does not change. It is a Word of God. It is like God. And so, what are the things that we can learn from here? Number one, Jesus woke up early in the morning early in the morning the number one we see here jesus is not lazy he woke up early in the morning see a lot of us are lazy and we want to sleep and sleep and sleep um uh, we, we we don't even have time div to devote ourselves and commit time to pray or commit time to um spend time with god uh, we have all the time to to pray we, ha we have all the time to sleep we have all the time to eat we have all the time to uh, uh, play games and other things but we don't have enough time to pray number one here we see that Jesus set time aside he set time aside you have to be intentional when it comes to uh, matters of spirituality and, and relationship with God you got to, to set time aside uh, you cannot just wait for it to happen, uh, you know, uh, or wait for others to ask you or to tell you, uh, can we do this, can we do that? You cannot wait for your pastor to tell you. You cannot wait for your bishop to tell you. Jesus, see, he woke up early in the morning. He wasn't woken up by anyone. He set time aside early in the morning. And as I said, we see him doing that again and again and again while he was in this world uh, during his ministry. He set up time early in the morning late at night it was still dark he got up he didn't pray in bed you know most of us we fall into the temptation of praying saying our prayers in bed and then while we're still in the midst of our prayers we fall asleep it's a temptation we fall asleep because the devil uh, he doesn't want you to pray you know, he brings all inter inter interruptions, he brings uh, all distractions so that you may not be able to pray because prayer is powerful. A powerful Christian, a prayerful Christian is a powerful Christian. And a powerless, a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. And the devil knows that. And so every time uh, you want to set time aside, you know, uh, he, he shows you or he, he makes you feel, you know, you can be able to pray from bed. You can be able to pray, uh, you know, uh, from wherever we are, from wherever you are. It's okay if you can. But we see most of the time what happens. You begin to pray while you are in your bed or when you are laying down on that couch. And then eventually you fall asleep and maybe... You say amen in the morning. Jesus set time aside. Set some time aside. He woke up early in the morning. He got out of bed. And then he left the house. He
he left the house. See, Jesus is coming out of his comfort zone. He, he is coming from the place where uh, all the luxury is. He has a bed. There is a bed in the house. You know, uh, there is uh, things, uh, things that he can eat. But he goes away from all this. He goes to a solitary place. Uh, away from all the comfort and the luxury. Uh, and then we see that's where he prays. There are two things that we can take away from here. Uh, other than prayer. Two things. Why does Jesus do that? Number one, he knows in a solitary place. What is in a solitary place? Number one, there is minimal distraction. Uh, when he goes to a min when he goes to a solitary place, when he is leaving the house, when it is still dark, well, all these things they help do one thing. Number one, minimize distractions. All these things they minimize distraction. There are not people who are coming to interfere. You know, Simon Peter and John and James, they're coming, waking up early in the morning, you know, or late in the morning while Jesus is praying and, and, and asking him questions or people are bringing their sick and they are lame and they are deaf and they are blind so that Jesus may heal or touch them. It minimizes distractions. When he's in, so, in a solitary place, there's no one to distract him. There's nothing to distract him. He's all by himself. And then, and secondly, uh, what happens or what this does is that it, it enhances concentration. Because there's no distractions, it enhances concentration. You are able to concentrate more. You know, uh, you have less things to think about. You have to, you just uh, uh, have to concentrate or you, can, you are able to better concentrate on what you're praying about, on the relationship or between you and God, because that's, that's the focus. So uh, going to a solitary place, leaving his house, early in the morning in the dark, it helps in two ways. Number one, it minimizes distraction. And number two, it enhances concentration. How is your prayer life? And how, uh, what's your culture? What's your um, habit of prayer? What, what do you do when you pray? Do you uh, begin to pray and you are on that bed which is so comfortable and, and then when you begin praying, uh, you fall asleep and you wake up early in the morning. Uh, you wake up in the morning uh, while in the still, while still in the middle of the prayer and you say amen in the morning. See, we can learn from Jesus. Jesus woke up early in the morning. He set time aside. There is importance in setting time aside it is important set time aside and then leave your comfort leave your comfort your comfort zone you know all the luxuries that you have you know uh, uh some of us we want to um um we want to pray even as you know we we are having our feet massaged by you know the good equipment that we have uh, in the comfort of a, a heated room but you know um jesus went away from all that and this is how the concept of retreat started. People were retreating so that they may get away from, you know, all the distractions and, and, and also so that they may have an opportunity to uh, uh, concentrate on what they are doing. I want to encourage you uh, to be like Jesus, to learn from Jesus, this culture of prayer in isolation or in a solitary place, in solitary places. It doesn't have to be away from your house, but you can set time aside and set a place where you can have time with God because it is important. We have a great example in Jesus. Praying to the Lord, enhancing your relationship with God in a place where you can concentrate and in a place where you don't have all these distractions. Thank you for joining me tonight, today. And may God bless you from wherever you are and we will be again tomorrow. We will be together again tomorrow and we will be blessed. May the Lord bless you and be with you. Amen.